Hey everybody, got a great question and that is, how do you do head swaps with your images? And I'm actually gonna show you three different ways of doing it because a single way may not work with all situations. Are we ready for this? Let's do it. Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you're new to the channel, this is dedicated to photography and as a photo artist and trying to think creatively out of the box. With that out of the way, let's get into our program and that is doing a head swap. And uh, if you're new to the channel, if you can do me a favor and that is like the video, subscribe if you have not subscribed and hit that notification bell. That way you'll get notified on upcoming videos. And I try to do one uh, at least uh, every week. Okay, let's jump into the program and that is um, head swaps, there's different ways of doing it, and it's a good idea to know at least three different ways. Now, this is not the only way, but these are very uh, typical common ways of, of doing it. And um, having flashbacks to uh, group shots I've done, this is a big deal, especially with weddings and family group shoots and corporate big uh, you know group shoots and stuff. Uh, not everybody's looking you know perfectly um, you know the way you would like them to look at the camera and some people are they're looking away or whatever and usually when i'm doing group shots i'm doing three shots in a row so let me give you the setup on on doing this properly but we don't live in a perfect world so i'm going to show you examples that were not done in my opinion the proper way you want to be on a tripod and everything should be manual mode manual focus everything because we want the same light same conditions and then uh, i could focus on hey everybody on the count of three look at me ready one two three Boom, and I, I hit that trigger. Then I do it again. One more. Are, are you ready? One, two, and on the count of two, that's when I hit it. They're expecting it on three, but I, I, I grab them by surprise. And a lot of times that is the perfect image right there. But again, it doesn't work all the time. And then I do a third one again. And, and I'm hoping that one out of three uh, comes out good. Now, a lot of times when I'm doing weddings, you're in a church and we're doing scenes after the ceremony and we're you know at the altar now. The priest says, hey, you get, the priest says, you got 30 minutes and you got to get out of here. So we are go, go, go. Don't have time to play around. So doing these three, you know, group shots, three at a time, boom, boom, boom. Next group, one, two, three. Just, I have to work fast. Okay. Family environments were a different location. That's totally different. But a lot of times you're under time constraints and you've got to get that shot and stuff. So let me show you the three different ways of doing this. And again, I mentioned that we are not in a perfect uh, world all the time. So these two images here that I'm going to select in Photoshop are not my images. This came from a friend of mine years ago, and this was handheld. And just to show you the two images, uh, that's one and that's the other. So uh, uh, just analyzing this, the two women are looking at the camera. He is not. He's looking at the camera there, but this one is distracted. So um, here's how we can uh, fix this. Now, again, this was handheld, but we could we can work on this. And that is I'm going to grab my move tool, V like and Victor to grab the move tool right here on her toolbar. And I'm going to hold the shift key down and not let go. Click and drag up to the tab of the other image. Come down anywhere here let go of my mouse, but the shift key is still uh, activated. And when I let go, now I can let go of the shift key and it puts that image uh, dead center. So now if we take a look at the stack here in the layers, there's one and there's the other. So, okay, so they don't line up and that's fine. Now, if you notice that this is a background layer, which is locked, I'm gonna leave that alone for right now because I want you to see something. I'm going to select both layers by clicking on this one, holding the shift key down, click on the background, and now both are selected. When I go to edit drop down menu and I come about meh, halfway down to auto align layers, I'm just going to choose the default setting, which is auto. That's all I need. Click on OK and it will adjust and try to figure out how things should line up for me. Now, this may not work in all situations, which I will share with you a little bit later. And I'm actually going to show, if you stay to the end, I'm going to show you 
one of the most challenging group shots I've ever done in my life, and that was about three years ago, and you're going to be totally surprised uh, at the ending. Um, anyhow, notice over here in layers what happened to my background layer. Well, it knew that to do this auto align, it needed to unlock that so it could move, which means now it's no longer a background layer. Now that those are lined up, if I go to the very top and turn this on and off, you could see that the bricks, it must have used the bricks to line everything up. But again, the ideal situation would have been a tripod. But we don't live in a perfect world. <laughs> and um, I might, you know, you could do it now or after the fact, but you could grab your crop tool if you want. And let me just make some adjustments here real, real fast. Uh, I'm not too worried about the, the composition here, just to get rid of some of the excess stuff. Okay, and we'll just accept that. Okay, now, again, if we take a look at the very top, turning that on and off. So what I'm going to do here, the very top layer, I'm going to apply a mask. So I come down here in the Layers panel toward the bottom, select this icon to add a layer mask to that very top layer. Now that I have that set, I'm going to grab my paintbrush, so B <clears throat> for brush, or you can go to your toolbox here and select the brush. I mean, that's totally up to you. I'm going to make sure the brush is a little bit bigger <clears throat> and it is a soft edge brush. I'm at 100% opacity. That's what I want. And I want to make sure I'm painting in black. And I look at my swatch over here and I can see the top swatch is black. So I'm all set to go. Again, I'm on the mask over here. And that's all I'm going to do is swipe across here and Basically, I'm done, other than if you're going to color grade this and do other stuff. But um, if you did, I would do this, Shift-Control-Alt-E. That would be my visible stamp layer. And again, if you're on a Mac, it would be Shift-Command-Option-E for the visible stamp layer. And then this is where I would continue working on this if I was going to apply um, some type of uh, an effect or color grading. Uh, it needs to be on that entire layer right there. Okay, so that was easy to do. Let me delete that and just show you that if I hide this, there's a before and after. Okay, and now we've got all three subject matters looking toward the camera. Okay, so that is one method of doing it. Now, let me show you uh, another method because this method may not work. Uh, I can't remember um, where I got these two images just to save time. One's on top of the other. Again, handheld. Um, I think... This was from a class I took way back years ago. Uh, I might be wrong, so I apologize. But again, it's not my image uh, at all. But again, handheld, ideally, it would have been better if it was on a tripod. But again, it wasn't. So let's do the same thing. I'm going to select these two right here. Go back to Edit Dropdown menu about halfway down again. Choose Auto Align Layers and let it do its thing. And now after it's done, let me click on the top one and notice that when I turn this on and off, her head does not line up. And what I want to do is I want her to look like that, the kids to look like this. And unfortunately, this method that I did the first time does not work here. So what I'm going to do is go to my uh, history panel here. Let's go back when I open this up. So we're back to the very beginning. And uh, again, Let's start over. So here's the second technique. And the second technique is I'm going to grab a selection tool. So I'm just going to grab my rectangle tool right there. And I'm just going to click and drag. Just make sure I get her hair just under her chin and out to the right. Okay, so I just did a random selection. Control J, Command J on a Mac is duplicating that selection. So you can see right here in layers, uh, I copied her head up to a new layer. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide the middle layer. So this one's active and the, the background one is active. Okay, so now I'm going to select the very top one, hold the control key down, command on a Mac, and click on the bottom one. So I'm multi-selecting the two. Now I'm going to go over to edit, come down to Auto Align Layers, just again, choose Auto, click on OK, and let's take a look, let me click on the very top layer, at the head. See, notice how it used the eyes now to line that up. That's perfect. That's what I'm looking for. 
Okay, if this doesn't work, I will show you, excuse me, I will show you a third way of doing it. Uh, excuse me while I get some water. Okay, so what do I do next? <clears throat> I apply a mask to the very top layer. Grab my paintbrush again, B for brush. Make sure I'm at 100%. I'm painting black. Make sure it's a soft edge brush. And it's all I'm going to do is paint down around this area right there. We'll go across the top there. And again, I would recrop the image uh, because we've got extra pixels on top. That's fine. But um, again, this is fixed. So if I show you the before and after on the mask, but here's the before and after. So it worked, and that's a good head swap. Now, again, um, if you're learning anything, if you could do me a favor again, and that is like this, um, subscribe if you have not subscribed, and also hit that notification bell. Also, uh, if you'd like to support this channel, because it is not uh, sponsored by anybody, it's not um, um, monetized by YouTube at all, it's not a big enough channel for that, um, I have set up. Uh, and I'll have the link right here at the bottom of the screen. It'll also be in the show notes. And that is buymeacoffee.com forward slash Stephen Photo Artist. If you go to that website, you can donate a coffee. It's, a, you know, it's a, on a random basis. It's not like a subscription, whatever. It's whenever you feel like doing one or two cups of coffee. Really appreciate it. It helps uh, say, um, you know, uh, again, um, it helps spend, uh, I, I actually, take away some of the costs it, it takes from putting together a YouTube channel and all the equipment and time and software updates, that kind of stuff. So really appreciate the ones that have done that in the past. Okay, let's take a look at um, what what if this didn't work at all? What would I do? So I'm going to go back again in the history panel. We'll go back when I open this up. And if the second method did not work, Here's what I would do, which I'd ha I have had to do um, again in past projects and stuff. And again, I'll show you one a little bit later. But if it doesn't work, I'm going to grab that marquee tool again, and I'm going to do this. I'm going to click and drag, just like I did last time. I'll do Control J, Command J to copy that up. I would hide this, the middle layer. Make sure you're on the very top one. I pull the opacity down to about 50%. I want to be able to see through that image on top. Grab my move tool. So V like in Victor or right here on their toolbar, you can grab the toolbar. Move tool right there. And I'm just going to use my up and down arrow keys. And what I want to do is use the eyes to line this up. Now, that looks pretty good to me. But what if her head was tilted and I couldn't get that? That's when we would have to do Control T, Command T on a Mac to activate the free transform tool. And then I would go over and maybe have to rotate that to make it fit. But bottom line is we could increase the size, decrease the size, rotate it to make that match as best we can in the eyes. Then hit Enter to accept it. And then go back to add your mask again to the very top layer right here. Grab your paintbrush, B for brush, and again, do the same thing. Just paint around that right there. And there we go. You know, uh, let's pull this up to 100%, Stephen. We forgot to do that. And um, there we go. Oh, uh, got to get rid of that smile off her face. Wipe that off. No, that was bad. Though. I'm just goofing around. Okay, so anyhow, that's uh, the third way. Okay, so uh, again, we don't live in a perfect world. It's important to know three different concepts and three different ways to do this to get the job done. Now, a little background. I'm going to share uh, an actual client with you for the ones that are watching to the end here. So I'm going to close out of that. Don't need this no more. Uh, let's see. Let's minimize this and let's open this up. Okay, a um, little history on this. This woman right here, her name is Kathy. Kathy, uh, I have done her um, daughter's wedding in the past. Uh, her two nieces' weddings, and the list sort of goes on, and family shoots and stuff. Anyhow, she has a she had a stroke a few years ago, and she cannot smile. It it just it's challenging. Uh, so just understand that. But um, here's the situation: this is all her grandkids, and they were all together visiting on one day, and we we're supposed to go to a park. It was a Saturday, and it was it was in the summertime, and it was pouring rain. And I called her up and said, "Hey, Kathy, uh, would you?" 
like to do this, you know, tomorrow on Sunday. I think it's going to be a nicer day. Oh, no, half the kids are, you know, going back to their parents out of state and that. This is the only day we can do it that I have everybody in one location. So I says, OK, uh, we'll have to shoot indoors. She goes, fine, we'll do it in my living room. I says, great. So when I went there, uh, first time being there, one is this is some some parts of the country call this a mobile home, a modular home, whatever. But anyhow, it was like close to 90 degrees outside, hot, humid, pouring rain. Inside, <laughs> the air conditioner didn't work. And it was 80 plus degrees and humid. And everybody, including me, was just sweating and getting drenched and stuff. I, we had to move furniture around so we can get the group shots in front of this window. Um, you can see all the stuff on the sides. Uh, I eliminated that. But uh, the, the point is, um, the group, it was so challenging. And this one here was crying constantly. I mean, we couldn't get her to stop. She was getting beat red. And we were doing group shots with the kids only without the adults in there. And um and then this is the big shot that she wanted to have over the fireplace and that. And uh, I was just taking shot after shot after shot. This is on a tripod. Again, strobe. My back is right against the wall um, as further as I could get, which wasn't that far. I think it's maybe I was uh, 11 feet, 12 feet back or something like that. And that was the best scenario in the entire place that I could work with. Okay, so you got to make the best of everything. She was getting frustrated with the kids. And she was just saying, Steve, just do your best. I apologize. First time I ever had a client apologize for the situation. But anyhow, um, it was just frustrating. And I, and I was trying to get her to stop crying. You just couldn't do it. And uh, it just things got worse and worse and worse. So what I did was I did multiple photographs and I did multiple head swaps to get the best out of this. Now, here's what I had to do with her. She kept crying when she was in front of the camera on her grandmother's lap. So when we broke up, she was standing there and I called out for her and I had my camera down by my side on my hip and I took a shot. I go, got it. I got it. And then I put her into the photo like that. Did the head swap, the technique, the third technique I shared with you. And that was I cut the head off, you know, with the square, rotated it, lined it up, masked it right in, Perfect. Nobody could tell. In fact, she was like awesome. She goes, I don't remember her being calm. But the point is, this is the best I could do under the situation. It was a total of, by the way, five head swaps. And I can't remember. I know I did this one. I know I did this one. Uh, the teenage girls were getting frustrated because their hair was falling down because of the humidity and stuff. Uh, I think I did this guy here. I can't remember. But I know it was a total of five. Got it all fixed up. I'm figuring, all right, I saved a day. That's a decent, you know, shot right there. And so what did they pick? Was the very last shot I did where I just said, everybody just make a funny face, look at the camera, look at each other, do whatever you want to do. Bam. This is the image. And guess which one she picked? Ta-da! Right there. You freaking never know what a client's going to uh, ask for or whatever, or like, I should say. But there you go. This one on social media, and everybody's making comments. Uh, yep, that's our family. Yep, that's our family. A lot of chaos and stuff. But you know what? Hey, save the day. But uh, what a memorable shoot that was. I mean, under the conditions, it was frustrating. But it's one of those things that when you're done, you just sort of laugh at you know, two, three, four weeks down the road and stuff like that. So bringing this up, that was over three years ago when I did this, just brought to memories of all the chaos and crying and, and uh, stuff that was going on. But anyhow, hopefully you learned something. Uh, and again, the head swaps I had to do here was actually uh, the third technique to get things lined up to make it work uh, with the, uh, the imagery right here. Okay, so again, hopefully you learned something. Get out there, get that camera, practice. You know what I always like to do uh, as my ending goes, and that is think creatively out of the box, literally think out of the box. Until next time, see ya!